what is Adams forward bending test? When patients are often diagnosed with scoliosis, the most common test that's performed is something called Adams forward bending test. And Adams forward bending test is a typically a screening type of test. And a screening means that we're looking for any kind of indicators that a person possibly could have a condition. And for Adams forward bending test, what they're looking for or trying to find is if they have any early indicators or to detect if the person has scoliosis. Why is early detection important with scoliosis? Because we know, especially in children, that scoliosis can be very progressive in nature. It can progress very, very rapidly in a, in a growing child. So when you can catch something early and you can find it very quickly with some type of test, you can prevent further progression if something is, if the person is actually treated appropriately. So we know smaller curves are definitely more flexible and we definitely know that the smaller the curve has, the easier these curves are to treat, especially in the conservative realm. So therefore d detection, early detection is very, very important because we can, if we can prevent this further progression from ever occurring, you're never dealing with a severe scoliosis where maybe surgery would be the now the recommended treatment. So catching it early is very important in the scoliosis patient. However, it's only important if you're going to treat it. If you're going to catch it early and say just you know watch it, well then I guess early detection isn't as important. And this is unfortunately why a lot of scoliosis screenings have gone away because many orthopedic surgeons kind of don't believe there's any real uh, improvement or no, no no real reason to catch it early because there's nothing to do about it and we're just going to watch and wait till the curve becomes big enough for surgery anyway so therefore early detection isn't as important for them but in the conservative realm early detection is very important because we know smaller curves definitely increase our chance of having a successful outcome even though there's no 100% guarantee with any type of treatment but we know early detection smaller curve younger patient definitely increases our chance of stopping curves from progressing, reducing the curve, and ever preventing a surgical recommendation from being recommended. In addition, the smaller the curve is, the more likely we are to keep it smaller. We know we can reduce curves percentages. For example, if we find a curve at 30 degrees, and let's say we reduce curves 30% on average, we could take a 30 degree curve down to you know 20 degrees. That is way better than looking at a 100 degree curve, reducing it 30%. Now we're at 70 degrees even though we're getting the same degree reduction, I would much rather be the first person that never became 100 and now only reducing the 70. I'd much rather be the person that gets found at 30 and reduce it to 20. So if we, if we reduce small curves smaller, we're much less likely to deal with big curves. So what is the Adams forward bending test and why is it so often used? It's a very easy scoliosis screening exam. It used to be mandatory in all schools. They used to do it twice a year. I mean, I mean sorry, twice in schools. Um, typically, they were doing it like in fifth grade and seventh grade. And the reason why they were doing it twice is because you can only find scoliosis if it's progressed to a certain size with this test. This will not find a five or a 10 degree curve. This will typically find a thoracic scoliosis that's progressed to 25 degrees or greater. And this test is um, and the reason why they did it twice because girls went through growth spurts earlier than boys. So if they screen uh, them at the exact same age, they would miss um, growth spurts that would occur in boys because they would they would grow later and they would never f see the curve progression. So therefore, they'll never get never get found. Unfortunately, like I said, a lot of scoliosis screenings have been eliminated because a lot of orthopedic surgeons there's, believe there's no real benefit in finding a scoliosis early because there's nothing you can, you can do about it anyway, and we should just let them progress into surgical realms and then do surgery when they get that size. I don't believe that. I believe finding a scoliosis early and treating it early can produce a way better outcome, like I mentioned. So what does this Adams test involve? Like, what is it? It's basically you're bending forward and rounding the upper back, and you're bending forward typically to 90 degrees, you're letting the arms kind of dangle naturally and relaxed, and we're looking at the spinal alignment. And what we're looking for is spinal alignment to be straight down, and we're looking at the ribs to make sure there's no arching. Very often in an Adams forward bending test, uh, a doctor may use a scoli meter. It's basically a level, a spinal level that has a little a dot here that you can actually place on the patient's uh, spine and you can see if there's any tilt. If there's a tilt over like five degrees, that's typically a positive scoli meter finding. And it's definitely more accurate using a scoli meter than just using it visually. And if we see a five degree tilt or more, we can suspect that there'll be a scoliosis. However, this is definitely more 
sensitive in a thoracic scoliosis in a lumbar. So a lot of lumbar scoliosis cases get missed in this test because it doesn't create the rib arching that you would see in a thoracic curve. And it can only be diagnosed a curve that's 25 degrees or greater, uh, typically when we see these 25 degree numbers. So if a patient, so let's just say for example, if a patient hasn't gone through a growth spurt yet, let's say they go in for a spinal screening, they go bending forward. They don't have uh, any type of rib arching that's visible. Let's say they have a 15 or a 10 degree curve. The very next day, that child, uh, they leave the office. The very next day, say the child goes, starts going through a growth spurt. The, the curve can start progressing. They typically don't come back next year to have their next pediatric visit. And that's when they have the spinal, this test done again. In 12 months, they can go through rapid growth and development. The curve can double or triple or quadruple in size in this year. And now they come back and they have this huge curve. So therefore you should be checking your children and, and, and your family often, because when kids go through this growth spurt is when the curve will develop it. And that's when the test will become positive. It will, it's not sensitive to small curves. And that's the problem with this Adams test. It's n it won't reveal every size of curve. It can only find ones that have gone relatively large. You should not just look at Adam's test. You should look at everything. We should not only look at rib arching. You should not only look at the spinal alignment, but you should have the person, your child stand. Typically with very tight, uh, like tights or tight or underwear or very tight shorts on and no shirt or just a bra and look at the back and look at the waist alignment. Make sure the waist is even. That's another way of looking for scoliosis, not just Adam's test, but looking at scoliosis, looking at shoulder heights, looking at the symmetry of the body from left to right. Look how the arms hang, whether they hang naturally and even on both sides, or is there any differences in, in, the, in the spaces between the arms and the body? And if there's any differences in, in the waist, any differences in the shoulder. If we see that, you also do Adam's test, bend forward. If you do all that, you're taking Adam's test and you're making it better because you can be now finding more sensitive uh, curvature sizes and you're looking for more curve sizes than just a thoracic curve. So early detection is very important, especially in the conservative realm. Screening can definitely allow us to be more proactive in the conservative realm for treatment. However, screening on a yearly basis is not super good for kids because kids grow rapidly and waiting every year meaning that you can miss a lot of progression, a lot of development in a very short, in, in this year period of time. So you should be looking at your children regularly to make sure while they're growing and developing that scoliosis isn't developing during the gross phases because that's typically when it occurs. And as these kids grow and as they're developing and maturing during puberty, that's typically when they're wearing bigger clothing. That's when you see them less often running around your house in underwear and kind of stuff like that. So you tend to miss it. And it's not necessarily your fault. It's just because they're mature and they're covering their bodies more and curves are kind of progressing relatively quickly and it kind of pops out of nowhere. And that's what I normally hear from patients is like, man, there was nothing there and I went in the year after and like, boom, there was this huge curve and like, how did I miss it? Because it happened fast. It happened fast during progression of, or, and growth because that's what causes the progression is this rapid growth. So check your kids. And in addition, unfortunately, early detection is not a priority in the medical uh, community because a lot of orthopedic doctors don't really think early detection makes a difference because if the curve is going to progress, you're going to have surgery and there's really no other treatment. But if you're looking for scoliosis and there's scoliosis in your family and you find it early and you want to avoid surgery, early detection is very important because it means early treatment and early treatment means much smaller curve and much better results. So I would definitely recommend screening your kids regularly and not just yearly. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.